Okay, so let's get rolling. Good morning again. Uh, welcome to our webinar, Three Advanced Use Cases for VMware Cloud. Uh, this is brought to you by Zadara. And as we get into it, you're gonna learn a little bit more about Zadara and who we are. Uh, but let's start by telling you who today's speakers who are. Who we specifically are. Exactly, so good morning. I'm Greg Newman, uh, VP Marketing here at Zadara, and I'm joined by our expert, Mark Levitt. Good morning. So, he is our Senior Director of Product Marketing and will be sharing with you more information about these use cases. Uh, and so without any further ado, let's get to it. What do you say, Mark? I think we're ready. Cool. Here's the agenda. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about VMware Cloud and AWS. Uh, we think it's terrific, of course, and we'll yeah, talk more we're about big it. big fans. Uh, and then we'll show you a little bit about adding Zadara storage and why you might wanna consider doing that. And then, uh, as we promised, we're gonna get into a little bit more depth about some use cases. And that's where I think it gets really interesting. And then uh, we will leave some time at the end for Q&A. Uh, please, if you have questions, I recommend you type them into the, uh, the chat area inside of your control panel. And that way, at the end, we can review those questions and provide answers to the group. If we don't get a chance to get to all the questions on today's uh, webinar, uh, we will provide follow-ups. Great. And pro tip, please go ahead and enter those questions anytime during the, during the presentation. Yeah. And, and that way, we will get to them at the end. Or we'll, <laughs> the sooner you put them in, the better chance we have of getting to them. So that's yeah. that's the, that's the key. Good point. Yeah, exactly. All right. So to start with a little bit of background about who we are, uh, we are an AWS partner, have been since 2011. We're very proud of that and very pleased to be a partner. You can see we've earned competencies in a number of areas, and uh, and in fact, we are available on the marketplace if you're interested. Uh, for those of you that think that it might be a good idea to streamline your purchases, uh, you can do that with, uh, with AWS in the marketplace. Uh, and so when we look at what it is we do, this is how we like to talk about it, Mark. Right, yeah, the important thing of why is it are. And what, what we do is in the realm of data storage, we give you the control that you're used to in the enterprise, the control that you need to keep your, your internal customers happy, combined with the agility the, and, and the responsiveness of cloud-based infrastructure. Yep, yeah, and, and we're gonna talk a little bit more, I know, throughout this presentation about these concepts, but I wanna take a moment right here to point out, people think of cloud and they think of a destination. But in fact, of course, it's an operating model. It's, it's an operating model, and, and it's an operating model that, that is continuing to evolve. Yes, yes, and so the cloud model is now being adopted in a variety of formats. We see it, of course, in data centers, on premises, People are understanding that now, I think, much more fully than they were in the past. Right, and if you're paying attention to, to the, the things that are getting written about in industry press, and certainly that, that uh, analysts like Gartner and, and IDC are talking about, is, you know, public cloud was like, that, that was so last year. Yeah, right. Right, I mean, if, hey, we had private cloud, then we had public cloud, and hybrid is really going. And hybrid, by the way, and what's the problem on an operating model? Yeah. Hybrid is not just like one public and one private. Yes. That's not what that is. And and again, the analysts are getting really specific about the kinds of things you need to do. And, and that some of the issues that they talk about are exactly what we're going to address in some of these use cases. Yes, exactly. So let's dive into it a little more deeply. Uh, so this is, I think, a good example of uh, how we see the world with respect to VMware Cloud and AWS. It's good, it's, but it's yeah. incomplete. Yeah, I almost feel that's a little weak. It's, if, if, if you're in a VMware environment and you're looking for a way to get into um, public cloud and hybrid cloud infrastructure. It's more than good. It's, it's, it is hard to argue as the best, simplest way to, for you to do that. That's true. Right, right. We, we don't want to take anything away from, yeah. from how good it truly is. It, it's a powerful tool. But it is not complete. That's We have to acknowledge, especially when it comes to the idea of uh, data and how you need to, to work with data. Yeah. And you can see some of the roadblocks here. Uh, if you want to go to other virtual private clouds uh, or you want to go to other clouds, other public clouds. Right. Uh, or you want to get on-prem, that can get expensive. Yeah, or even, yeah, and, and you hit this in the diagram, but but even cases where you want to be other places with an AWS, yes. so the same cloud provider, but outside of your software-defined data center that you do with VMware, it, it really gets challenging, um, and and the, the offering, the, the base offering, it can be limited for if you have a complex case. So we saw these constraints. We understood these constraints when, when this first came out. Of course, because we're partners with, with VMware and uh, knew all about this. And we came up with a solution. Right. We make it simpler. So we have a simpler box right in the middle. Yep. And the key thing is that we give you the same capabilities. Again, it's, it's a different take on what we said at the beginning, 
about the control of enterprise and the agility of cloud. We give, that's what we give you here is like, we give you on-premises capabilities, whether you're on-premises or in public clouds or in multiple public clouds. And we combine that with not just basic storage services and, and, and availability services, but also additional services that, that make the whole operation much more streamlined. We wrap it up and we operate the storage environment for you. That, that's, that's the as a service part. As a service isn't just a payment model. Right. <laughs> you got to have the service piece. And so we wrap it up with a very strong service offering that manages your storage operations for you. So this is a great point you make. And I know we're going to talk about it in a, in a few slides a little bit later in more depth. I know, but I get excited. And but, well, it's, it's core. It's key. It's, it's, it's everything we do. And, and the point I want to make here, and I think everybody who's on this call, I'm sure, is aware of it, is things have gotten mighty complex lately. And if, if there's a way to simplify, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure uh, everybody would be interested in, in figuring that out. It's tough to do that in the enterprise realm. It's tough to do that when you're dealing with things right. that are complex. Things got complex for a reason. Yeah, exactly. And I think that, that our approach, and of course, it's been our approach from the start, from 2011 when we started this, uh, and I want to hand uh, the founders of this company some real credit. Uh, they were visionaries. Uh, you know, the, the approach here is, is that uh, you need to start with a services model in mind. You need to start with the idea that we're a services company that, oh, by the way, has some wonderful technology, too. Yeah. And that's the approach yeah. we take. Yeah, and that's the way the company's built. That's, that's exactly right. But to dive a little more deeply into the technology, because I know people are curious and they're interested, we can spend a moment here and we can talk a little bit about uh, what goes into it. What the, we, we have, of course, the same box that you saw on the previous screen, but now we've broken it out a little broken bit. Broken it out, get a little, more, um, a little more detail. Yeah, we're not saying, by the way, just to declare, we're not saying the technology is important. Yeah. Right? You, you've got to have the technology to back it up. And, and that's what we're talking about here. Starting with sort of the green layer there, with our virtual private storage approach, uh, which we'll get into in, in some more detail in, in another slide, we actually can provide, uh, we, are, we're, we are the honest breakers on file on file typing. Within the same infrastructure, we can provide uh, files, block, and object. Uh, any combination that you want, and with lots of other uh, um, gradations of performance levels and is it all flash storage media right storage yeah. media independence right and 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 things that contribute to the complexity you talked about that we handle for you that's all available right so it's, you're not giving up anything here we have and you get it from one place so that's the streamlining operation on top of that we have uh, a series of services that are either directly from us so for instance in the case of antivirus uh, you can uh, uh, subscribe to our antivirus as a service, avoid and, and apply that same simplification model to your antivirus operations. Um, or you can use your, your uh, if you have an enterprise-wide antivirus model, that's fine. We still make it a lot simpler for the antivirus to operate. Uh, backup, to pick up another example, again, we have a, a really simplified, streamlined oper option there uh, that you can just pay by the month on with us. But we also have uh, very strong partnerships with people like Veeam and Commvault uh, to get you the enterprise level backup for those more complex operations. DR, I mean, you can't, DR, HA, those are, on one sense, those are table stakes. On the other sense, we actually do that and we use it and it's real. Mm -hmm. So we're not just claiming it. We have, you know, we can show you this. This is something that our customers do all the time. And again, because of the service offering, it's really a lot of it is stuff that we do for our customers all the time. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Archiving distributed file systems, uh, VMware we're talking about today. Containers is an interesting one in that we have the ability to put storage adjacent processing in there. That's another option you have from us. Uh, a lot of Microsoft integration points that we'll talk about. Yep. Um, some great fits in, in remote office, branch office. And it goes on, right? But, but to give you an idea that those kind of, it, it's a rich environment. Yeah. There's a lot you can do with it. Um, you're not giving up anything except complexity when you pick it up. Yep, exactly. And you can see you can you can come, your data may come from anywhere, you can go anywhere. You can go anywhere and it can be, uh, and not only is it on premises or a service provider or a hyperscale public cloud, it can be on n hyperscale public clouds. Yeah. And we have, you know, unlike a lot of people who make claims, we have people, who, customers who actually do that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's pretty complex integrations or implementations. Yeah, this, and this is where the expertise of our operations staff comes in. I mean, yeah. They're, they're DevOps 
DevOps capability is is amazing, and the amount of the amount of storage that they're able to, to operate across the world is amazing. Again, that's why when uh, when our founders started, uh, it was brilliant. They said we need to make sure we're a services company, we're an operating company, we're yeah. not just a technology company. Uh, I know that you, you alluded to a couple of these things in the previous slide, but right. it's worth showing exactly how uh, you get all of the benefits of, of your, you know, your on-premises or your, your traditional environment, uh, including the privacy and, and the dedicated resources and all that, uh, but you get the efficiency. Right. It, I mean, so let's start at the end point because that's really what you allude to. What, what you get out of all this is you get predictable performance and you get data security. How we do that is what we call the multi-tenant efficiency with single tenant experience. The, the, the storage was architected from the beginning to be to support multi-tenant. And for, for people that are into storage architecture, supporting multiple independent, um, and I'm sort of air quoting customers, right? Because they could be internal customers, they can be external customers, but supporting those and maintaining the avoiding data leakage and avoiding the noisy neighbor problem where somebody is too, taking up too much of the resources. This is not trivial and this is not something that you bolt on as, a, as an afterthought. Right. Or you can try, but it's, gonna, it's not gonna work well. <laughs> uh, so we were architected from the beginning to deliver that. Uh, and, it's, and again, key point there, it's elastic in all directions. You can scale up, you can scale out, you can scale back in yeah. um, as, par as part of the service as well. We also support a, you know, encryption for the data protection, um, and that's both at rest, in flight, and those are with customer managed keys, and, and that's still not something you see very much of. So, you know, to to the point, we don't have the ability to uh, to uh, decrypt your data if you've got put it using uh, your own keys because we don't have the keys. So this is our things that we do to make sure that that your storage is yours, even if it operates in a shared environment. Yep. Uh, and of course, if it's on premises, then you can deliver that kind of separation, um, including build back and show back to your internal customers as well. Um, you know, the rest of that is, is, is that's all important technology, um, just to give you a flavor for it. Uh, the, the secret sauce will surprise nobody is all software. Mm -hmm. We're using industry standard platforms. Uh, we're staying up on latest technology in terms of storage media and connectivity, things like that. And, and that has some really, and I'm just going to take, a, I'm going to riff just for a second on that, mm -hmm. uh, because this is something that um, is really important to understand about our, our managed services model. Uh, whether you're on premises or in the cloud, as the technology wheel turns, and, and we all know that it does turn, um, staying current is not a small exercise. Uh, I have a lot of experience working with clients very large clients, very sophisticated, who that was their single biggest storage problem, was keeping vast amount of, uh, their vast number of storage rays uh, up to date. You don't have that problem with Sonara because we do that for you. So even when you're on premises, uh, as an example, uh, you know, we're entering the, the NVMe age here, right? This is, this is now new technology is gonna give you more performance, less latency, uh, and, and lower costs. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have uh, more than one, but I'm thinking of one particular customer who's been with us for several years. They've already ridden that technology curve three times, or they've, they've been able to jump technology curves three times. They've changed the storage that they offer, uh, and all you have to do to do that is to ask us. Yep. There's no additional cost. There's, no, there's nothing else. You're in an environment, you say, hey, I'm on an all-flash array right now. I want to go to NVMe. We say, fine. Mm -hmm. and we schedule it and it happens for you and your bill will go up or down depending on what kind of selections you've made but if the media you've gone to for instance going from and this is going to happen with with our nvme offering uh if you go from all flash to nvme your bill is going to go down yeah and, and we're happy to do it and you're not yeah right this is a, this is a key point you make right you're not locked in you're not uh yeah, it's the it's, it's whatever the opposite of lock-in is right <laughs> total freedom I mean, I mean, we're like here here yeah you know get a discount on your storage please yeah, yeah. Exactly. I, don't, I don't care that you don't want it i think you should have it <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's uh it's an important component i know all of us uh, when we look at managing storage we do want to find a way to stay on the um up to date and it's not easy i, I want to make a point that i was i was making a joke there you do have control of the world whether you get to whether you take the technology or not thank you we, we don't really push that at you <laughs> we just tell you that you have the option and it's up to you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a quick summary of, of the capabilities, some of the features that I know you've alluded to. 
Uh, it's just, uh, so I, I think the reason I put this slide up is that it's sometimes uh, hard. People hear our discussion and, and maybe the people on this call are feeling the same way. Like, wow, there's just so much to it. I, I can't believe you, you you offer so much. Well, yeah, and I, you, you have a comment as we've talked about it that I like, which is, and it's, it's not like one of our most amazing taglines, but it's like with, with Zadara, the closer you look, the better we look. And that's kind of the opposite of a lot of other places. Yeah, right. Right. You look and you find the warts. In this case, it's like the more you look, the more stuff you get. Yeah. Um, and and it's, it's hard to get it all in front. So what this is, this, I mean, this, this slide in the presentation is really about is, again, underlining the point that these are all the things that you need to deliver enterprise storage capabilities to your organizations. Yeah. Right. And so what we're just saying is, look, this is, uh, you know, all these things that you're used to, or maybe in some cases aspire to, but know that no are out there, uh, are things that you get with Zadar. So again, you know, it's it can be block, it can be file, it can be object. Um, you can have it in fl all flash. You can have it mixed hard disk and flash. You can have it all hard disk. All these options exist. And if I keep talking, Greg's gonna go to sleep. <laughs> no. So, so uh, but, 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 you know, all the things that modern storage does. So dedip, dedupe, and and thin provisioning, uh, large ones, all that kind of stuff, and some things that are looked back also. Um, if you look at public cloud offerings, not everybody does things like support uh, newer versions of NFS or or support advanced um, advanced directory with, uh, and we didn't listen, mention it here, but also with um, with Microsoft failover clustering, mm -hmm. right? And these aren't necessarily hot, sexy topics anymore as much as they were maybe 15 years ago, but there's a lot of enterprises that depend on that functionality. Right. And and, you, and you've got it. Uh, Multi-zone high availability is like, okay, if, if you haven't been into the public cloud, that you look at that and you go, uh, what's that? Yeah. And it's a little bit longer discussion, but the idea is, Again, making sure that even within your cloud environment, and those you know these hyperscale cloud environments are highly available, but we can do better than that mm -hmm. by by spreading your risk across multiple zones within a cloud provider, and by uh, and this goes to the hybrid the hybrid cloud point by even spreading your uh, your availability across multiple cloud providers. We can make you we can help you build an infrastructure that is as close as you can get to to ain't going to go down ever right at least never all the way um you know short of a really big hot rock hitting the earth or something um <laughs> it's, you know, it's a possibility it's a possibility <laughs> i said almost um and, and again non-disruptive upgrades um any enterprise equipment worth its salt can do that um the difference is that we do that for you and we do it all the time mm -hmm. um snapshots clones remote mirroring cluster support here yeah so you can see really what we're saying is uh, as, as Greg's eyes roll back in his head. Well, I'll tell you why I was staring uh, uh, in a second. The, there's, there's no trade-offs with Zadar. In fact, the, the only trade you're making is you're, is you're increasing your choice. Yeah. Uh, and the reason I was staring, Mark, is that, is that as you're talking, and I know that these topics get you excited and animated, your coffee mug was very close to your arms there. And I was, <laughs> I was thinking it could go over, but I, you were good. I'll, were I'll good. put it in a safe distance. <laughs> Secure encryption. You talked about this. I, so, I talked about so this. I don't think we well. need to belabor this. It's important. People do ask us quite a bit. So but it goes. But it goes to the point of the control of the enterprise, yeah. right? In, in, in when when you put your data into um, like the default offerings in a, in a hyperscale environment, you tend to give up that level of control. Yeah. And people are not wrong to be somewhat nervous about this. This isn't saying that the hyperscalers aren't good at what they do. They are very good at what they do. But it isn't their data. It's your data. Yeah. And, and so we make sure that you control who can see that data. Yeah, exactly. Well said. Uh, and speaking of control. And speaking of control. Here's our control panel, one of them. And, uh, and I think that a lot of people ask this question because there is this, this, this notion of, well, I'm, I, what am I giving up or how, how does this work exactly? Well, here's what you see yeah, on a day-to-day -day basis. It, it's really actually, and this is one of the things uh, that is pretty unique about Zadar, another thing that is pretty unique about Zadar, is that the way we do this, the way we do this uh, this full service storage as a service, enterprise storage as a service, is in a way that uh, storage administrators, you know, seasonal storage professionals, are 
tend to be really comfortable with because what we give you is this interface and you know okay GUIs good we got GUIs and mm -hmm. but uh, we give you the 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 operating interface the fact that you manage virtual arrays is very similar to what they're used to anyway yeah uh, you know I, and you and I both had the experience of sitting down with storage administrators and showing them the thing and they go oh yeah okay I get this exactly right? Yeah. Right, it's like okay, yeah, exactly. The the difference is you don't have to worry about any of the details behind it, but you do the same kinds of things in terms of saying I need this much storage and I want it to be this kind of storage, and it it tends to be a very comfortable transition, and that's again part of the visibility and control. Exactly. We've talked a lot about but, this, right? Right. Not not to uh, dwell it, on this, but I think it's it's worth at least spending another minute. It it, it is, and and the point I really want to go I want to go to the bottom here. Because mm -hmm. uh, we've talked about, you know, you, you and I have a very high regard for our staff, a worldwide staff. True. Uh, for that, that handles this. But, um, you know, where we put uh, put the money where the talk is here is that we provide this 100% S uptime SLA. Uh, and it compares really favorably <laughs> to almost anybody else's. Um, it, it's because it's a really very, it's a pretty unconditional SLA. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at um, SLAs from, from Amazon, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not picking on them. Again, I have very high regard for Amazon. They're a very important partner. But uh, they tend to tell you that it's four nines availability guaranteed. And, uh, you know, in terms of getting credit back on your bill, it's limited to 20% of your, you know, and, and they're not unique in it. That's pretty standard in the industry. Oh, we don't fool around with that. Yeah. Right. Keep it simple. Just like it's very simple. Yeah. And we, what our SLA to you is 100%. And if that doesn't happen, then we don't fool around with up to 20% of your bill or anything. You get credit for your downtime. And and to point out, because I'm sure there are people that are thinking this right now, our uh, performance over the last eight years. Uh, yeah, is good. I mean, it's five and a half nines. Five and a half nines uh, across all kinds of environments. You know, yeah. depending on 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 every you know on lots of infrastructure that we don't even necessarily control. That's the hundreds of data centers, thousands of VPSAs, uh, eight years. Hundreds of petabytes. Yeah, we're talking uh, five and a half nine. So uh, from our perspective, we're happy to offer 100% uptime guarantee because we know we can you know, yeah. we perform. Yeah. Uh, here's the AWS regions, uh, 16 and counting. Uh, good for anybody who's working with AWS to know uh, we have some terrific choices available and. Uh, if you don't see your region on the list for some reason, uh, let us know. Yeah, talk to us. Um, it, you know, setting up a, a new region isn't trivial for us, but it's something that under the right circumstances can be done yeah, in, in a relatively short amount of time. I don't want to quote anything because because then our ops team will get upset with yeah, it. Yeah, let's, let's avoid that. Yeah. But they tend to get it done pretty quickly yeah. um, if, if, uh, if it's an important requirement. Well, we pretty good choices here now, so we suspect that... Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're covering a lot of... But, but again, if you didn't see it, let us know. Yeah, uh, we like this slide. I like this slide. Uh, maybe I like this slide because it, it tells a story that I understand. Yeah. And that's that, uh, you know, you've got a chance to, to really lower your costs, uh, increase your uh, choices, you know, reduce your risk across so many different parameters, right? You've got your operating risk, your technology right. risk, your financial risk. Yeah. And, uh, and here we have, uh, and this was a, a study done over years by uh, the evaluator group mm -hmm. on our behalf. So an independent study, and, uh, and you can see the results are really quite dramatic when it comes to CapEx, no surprise. Right. The surprise for me uh, was the other cloud services um, uh, at first, but then I realized, oh, you know what, because of our mix, the, the mix of media that we can offer and the choices that we offer um, with the, the full stack we have, uh, of course people can tailor it and, and make their you know, make, make their dollars work for them a little harder with us. Yeah, that, that, that's true. I mean, uh, and a simple example is that uh, if you again, if you look at the basic storage offerings from the hyperscalers, if we look at the the blue line, the two lower lines, the blue line and the green line, so the R line, the big difference there is that a lot of those offerings, um, hyperscalers oftentimes offer as, for instance, only all flash. Right. Right. And they do it for their own reasons, um, and, and they're good reasons. It's there's not a bad decision. Yeah. But it has implications in terms of what the what the media cost is. So that's that that's one of the big things and the difference in the line. The other to be not to be too blunt about it, but 
uh, yeah, I don't think, for instance, Amazon has adjusted their pricing on storage much, except with new offerings. But for existing offerings, I don't think they brought it down in the last five years or so. Yeah, there's going to be some four pressure. Years, something like four or five years. Yeah, and there's going to be more of that because there's there's more parity. We see other hyper, hyper scalers pushing on them. But Mark, I looked at the clock. Yes, we need okay. to move. Okay. And, you know, I know we we love talking about this stuff, but we did promise people we'd get to some use cases. Okay, right? use cases. So let's... so uh, here's some uh, logos for those of you wondering who we are and who we serve. There's a few of the logos of the many that we serve. Yeah. Uh, we are going to talk now about getting more out of VMware Cloud on AWS. Uh, we've talked about these points. Uh, this is a good summary, I think, of, of what we've been talking about in the last uh, several minutes. Uh, the enterprise-grade performance, the, the agility, right, the, uh, the idea of forever young storage. We've talked a lot about different terms we might use there. Yeah. And then the service, of course, wraps the whole thing up, the service offering and the, and the guarantee. Right. Yeah, this, this is the big change. This, this is what is really different. I'm going to hand you the control. All right. Uh, so you can do. Uh, I have the con. Yes. So you can do the animation. Okay. So the simple case is like the simplest way is like okay, I have an environment, and I want to uh, just what does it mean to add Zdar? Right. Yeah. How do I get into my environment? So if we start with something really simple, not to say that the VMware Cloud is simple, but if you have it running, it looks pretty simple. Uh, and it's saying, all right, I want. How do I add VM? How do I add Zdara to uh, to my VMware cloud. And I and what I'm doing here is I'm just exporting uh, some file and some block storage. This is uh, pretty arbitrary. Uh, we present it, and I'm just gonna kind of zip through it. And we present it to, and we have, by the way, there's a, we have um, full tech brief write-ups on how to do this uh, step by step. In fact, I think, yeah, that's the, <laughs> that there is the URL. Yeah, that was good. Um, you like the way I just sort of segued there? Uh, to, to explain how to do this, but it really, it's, fundamentally, it's that simple. You present the storage to the clients, and and then they have access to all that capability, okay? So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, and what do you get for that, all right? Well, we get all the, the enterprise functions that we talked about, you know, snapshots, clones, remote mirroring for availability, you have the flexibility of the media types, you have the flexibility of the data types, you have the flexibility of the transport mechanisms, uh, iSCSI and Fiber Channel, uh, NVMe will be mapped over those and, and the higher performance uh, IP options. Uh, location flexibility, is it in your premises? Is it in a cloud? Where is it? Uh, fundamental answer is we don't care. That went faster. Okay. <laughs> that sure did, didn't it? Yeah, it wasn't a point we want to talk about anyway. Um, <laughs> Okay, so now let's, let's let's take that same base case now and 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 actually talk about an actual use case. So uh, and and we have this is this is the the hybrid the first step hybrid case, and this is something that a lot of our customers do. It's mm -hmm. like I have my on-premises environment. I now want an environment, and in this case we're using VMware Cloud, right? So we have VMware Cloud Cloud on-premises. I now want an environment in AWS, and and that. You can do a lot of things with that, so we're not going to worry about why you want that, okay? But that's that's what you decide you want. Well, here's how you do it. You just expect you just present the same storage out there, and uh, physics allowing, right? You got to have the the network performance to make all this work. But if the physics does allow it, then um, you can have both these things sharing data. It's that simple, isn't it? And, yeah, and now you really, really have mobility. Now, I not to go too far down the path, but Obviously, VMware has the capability of migrating between clouds. They can migrate applications, and it's super powerful and very important to people looking at this kind of model. There is something to watch, though, which is you can move the application servers and the licenses and the capabilities, but when you move the data, if there's a lot of data, and you know, it's like nowadays a terabyte is like nothing. It's an eighth of a disk drive. Yep. Right. So we're talking about tens or hundreds of terabytes. Typically, um, if you move that data, if that data is in your AWS environment and you move it out, there's this thing called an egress charge, um, which runs, depending, you know, your, your miles will vary, but it can run nine cents a gigabyte. So uh, that if, if you do a lot of back and forth, that can really start to add up. Whereas in this case, the storage is outside of AWS. It's adjacent to AWS. So you don't pay those kind of egress charges, and you have a lot more, uh, both from a performance perspective, because you may not have to migrate at all, because the data is presentable in both places, but also you don't have to move that data 
So you also have a serious avoid those costs. Yeah, you're talking about ninety thousand dollars for a for a keta, for a petabyte to move, right? Yeah. And let alone how long it would take. So, so the, this is a serious advantage to the the cloud adjacent approach. Yeah. All right. So we got our data extension done. What do you get? No migration uh, required. Again, physics allowing. Um, really bidirectional workload migrations now work very smoothly. Uh, same copy can be shared between the two environments. Uh, so, and, and that's you know, for, for again for data architects, that's really important, right? Yeah. It's like yeah, I'm not taking a copy. I don't have to worry about synchronizing it. It's the same data. Um, and replicated data can be presented anywhere, right? So if you, you're doing typical kind of data extraction stuff where you would want to do machine learning, analytics, um, application consistent backups is a huge work, uh, use case. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Uh, update verification, run new versions of apps against your existing, against real data. Um, these are all very powerful things to use replication for in general that you can also use leverage across multiple sites now just by implementing. Okay, so now we got that one done. And now we're gonna talk about what if we wanna migrate? What if our purpose in bringing on the, uh, the AWS aspect of the VMware Cloud is in fact to migrate our production environment or, or a piece of our production environment to the cloud, right? Right. We're gonna be done. We get that a lot. Get that a lot. Uh, it makes a lot of sense uh, for some cases. Wow. Okay, so these are, this is a very similar case. And what happens is here, now the physics didn't allow here, right? We're saying, okay, these two data sets are too far apart to, to uh, share the same copy of data at acceptable performance. Then what we do is say, okay, fine. Uh, you're gonna have to do some work from their side to our, the customer has to decide how to partition this. Um, but we have the capability of very, very, very simply replicating between sites and uh, so they can back each other up. And you can do the same kind of data mobility thing that I just talked about, where uh, one site can be doing testing on the other site's data or can be backing up the other site's data. Uh, again, kind of shrinking your backup windows uh, by using uh, uh, an instantaneous snapshot and mm -hmm. replication, you can shrink your backup window effectively to zero um, because you can go off and do it in a different infrastructure. Um, okay, so that's the business continuity piece. And migration over distance. Yep. What I love is that these cases, of course, came out of our actual experience. I mean, we this, this is this, all the time this is actually working with customers. Yeah. You got something flashing there. Yeah. Well, we're we're hitting data here, and so this is our production data running. We, our green brackets here are around a cluster. Uh, a micro, and we're sorry, we're going to find that. We're, this is around a Microsoft failover cluster, mm -hmm. specifically, and it's doing production SQL data work, or it could be exchange. But we're saying SQL data work uh, on, on our friend there, though, who was who was kind of doing his throb there, and that's that's great. And what we're now going to do is we're going to just take a copy of that data, uh, and it's an application consistent copy uses Shadow Services pop it out there and then present it to another instance of the SQL server to do the kinds of thing we were talking about, to do um, you, more of actually a really common use case uh, when we're talking about database servers in particular is to take that copy and then to give it to another instance of, of the database server software to do a check of the data before you back it up. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and this can be folded into, for instance, a ransomware protection scheme as well, mm. uh, that you that you check the data before you back it up, so that your backups are known good before you before you go to set, say your offsite copy. And yeah, you populate analytics, test new versions. We talked about that. Uh, new use, relatively new use case. Yeah. If you're taking your operational data, you can then put it in here, and you're still operating within a, a secure framework. You can then uh, do your post processing to anonymize your the, uh, something that would be otherwise uh, personally identifiable data for use in analytics or whatever you want to protect the um, the confidentiality of the users that you would otherwise identify. Yeah. So uh, you know, I'm I'm sure the audience is pretty aware of GDPR. Oh and, yeah. And California's got that coming in in January. Very similar, very tough rules. Um, so it's 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 a, it's a new. It's a new use case. 
Um, and, and the key thing is, is you don't have to choose these, right? You can do all of this at the same time. It's all good. Make as many clothes as you want, make as many snapshots as you want, do whatever you want with it. It's yeah. your data, do more with it. And then just to kind of complete it, all those things I talked about doing on site, you can also do with your offsite, you know, elsewhere. Again, that would typically be in this conversation, that would be in AWS, but uh, VMware has other uh, partnerships in other clouds. Uh, and there's no reason that you would be restricted to AWS uh, because we support all those different clouds. All right, and that's what we talked about. That's so there's, and th then there's this neat trick. Um, and, and you'll get more from us actually over the next month or so. Mm -hmm. You'll see more from us on this. So this is, if, for those of you that are out there that um, uh, are involved with SQL Server, SQL Server upgrades, um, SQL Server 2008, end of life has been a fairly hot topic. Um, there are some cool tricks that you can use uh, with, by combining the capabilities of, of VMware Cloud and Zadara and, and some Microsoft tricks to actually reduce your, your software licensing costs on SQL Server. Okay, how? If you have failover clustering, and again, you need an environment that supports failover cl clustering, well, fortunately, VMware and Zadara do, uh, so you can do that. And you have multiple SQL Server databases, okay? And you have Microsoft Software Assurance. If you don't know what this is, you can just sort of ignore the rest of the slide because it won't make any sense, but those of you that have Software Assurance We'll, we'll probably just start paying attention. Okay, if that's true, and you need a clustered SQL server for availability, right? We're not scaling it up because it's big. We're, we're, we wanna make sure that, the, what we're really doing is making sure that the, the SQL server is always available, right? That's, it's, it, we're clustering for availability, but the, re, the required performance for each, in, for each database fits within a single instance, okay? Then, you can actually leverage the failover cluster with SQL Active Passive Failover to use standard server SQL server license instead of enterprise license. This translates to saving a lot of money every year, uh, especially if you have multiple licenses. Again, we're, we're, we have some, uh, some good uh, white papers coming on that over the next uh, 30 days. So that's your environment. We saved you money, we gave you lots of flexibility and capability, and uh, we showed you how to get your enterprise services without having to own any storage ever again. <laughs> well said. That was a lot to take in on all of these use cases, but I, I suspect our audience who, who does this for a living uh, gets a lot of this. Well, yeah, that's your point. I, I, I am guilty, especially today, I don't know what happened, this is the coffee or something. I, I really did uh, put a lot more in there than I usually do. So uh, my apologies if I, if I sort of overwhelmed anybody. Um, my objective there was actually to throw enough out there that you guys would pick up on some piece of it that made sense to you and that you wanted to pursue. Yeah. Right, and, and, and ask a question, uh, give us a call, send us an email, in, in any way you want. Uh, reach out to me on LinkedIn if you don't wanna go, but, uh, but if you have questions about it, we'd love to talk to you about it because we usually have really good answers to your questions. And I, and it's packing all of these things into a into webinar is always a challenge. It is, it is, there's a lot here. Um, glad we could go through it with you, everyone. Uh, and if you do have questions, now is the time. We've left some time here at the end to answer them. Uh, I see we're getting a few questions, Mark. Maybe we can dive right in. There's a question here uh, about remote mirroring. Yeah, when the, so the question is, when there's remote mirroring, is it an active, active solution? That is a complicated question. I mean, I'm, and I know the person who asked that question understands that that is a, that's a complicated discussion. Uh, the answer is it can be, um, but there are, yeah, it goes down on the general category of physics is a real bear, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the speed of light, light is a real limitation. So in conditions where, uh, where your data center and where, where the data center is involved are close enough that you can get acceptable delays between them. You know, so we're talking about round trip times of typically certainly less than 10 milliseconds, preferably a couple of milliseconds. Then you can certainly do active-active. 
If you go much beyond that, then your performance is going to, and, and if you go much beyond that, your, your stability will be a problem. But even uh, your performance tails off as you have to do synchronization between sites. Again, I think for the audience that was interested in that particular question, uh, that will make sense. If it was a bunch of noise to a lot of people, I apologize. So while we're looking at the other questions, it occurred to me, Mark, I realized I had a question for the audience I wanted to ask. Great. Uh, and I didn't ask it earlier, but uh, let me let me launch a poll, everyone. If you can, uh, please take a look at our poll. Uh, we're always looking to learn more about yeah. what you care about so that we can provide educational information about topics that will be interesting to you. And you can see we put together a quick poll asking you uh, what you care about. Uh, I'm seeing now results. Here we go. People are answering. All right. Let's give it. Let's give it a little time to get the answer in since we sort of sprung that on them. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. We did spring it on them. Uh, the uh, it, your your comment about uh, um, the failover clustering and we are coming up with some stuff in the next 30 days yeah. reminded me. We're always coming up with new stuff. There's so much to talk about. Yeah. Let's make sure we're talking about the stuff people care about. And uh, yeah, and we want to, and we certainly want to do that with the, with the webinar series. Is, yeah, is, is make sure we're hitting these points. All right, so. I appreciate it. Uh, we're, we're we've given it just about a minute. I'm going to close the poll, and we can take a look yeah. uh, at the results here in just a second. Give you about what, 10, 15 more seconds. All right, we need that music from Jeopardy. I know, right? Yeah. Well, but I'm still seeing answers. I'm still seeing responses come in. Me so. too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's probably good enough. I think it is. Let's share the results. Let's take a look. Who said what? Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. You went to the right. Uh, hopefully, you feel like you went to the right webinar, but that that <laughs> certainly is the topic we want to where I'm with most focus on, at least laying it out so you so you have more questions to ask. Yeah. Uh, to explore it further. Um, the on-prem stuff. That's interesting. Yeah. That's. You know, and, and speaking from a Zadar perspective, we are really glad to have you guys on board because yes. that that is our story. Yeah. Uh, and, and my my um, what I like to say about that when we talk about as a service and particularly as a service on premises is, you know, that is what we do. Mm -hmm. You know, enterprise storage as a service is what we do. That is all we do. We don't have any conflicting got to protect our installed base things because our installed bases ourselves doing yeah. delivering as a service. And we've been doing it for eight years. Uh, so this is not something we decided to do, you know, made some announcements this year. This, this is something we have been operating, well, probably operating for maybe seven years. Um, this brings up a, a question that popped up and, and so that's a good time to ask it right here. Yeah. Um, somebody had asked, uh, is your on-premises offering different than your cloud offering or is it, is it the same? Yeah, and, and it, 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 the answer is it's the same. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there are physical differences, yeah. right? So if, if you if you subscribe to the cloud offering, then it lives in our data centers, uh, that our cloud adjacent data centers. Uh, and if you subscribe to on-premises, then it lives in your data center. We ship you the gear. Right, we, yeah. right. so it's, it's like, there's your boxes and you plug them in and our, you know, we help you install it and, and get it running. But, uh, but it is the same services. The same services are available and um, and the pricing is the same. Yeah, that's a good point because there's another question about that, about the pricing and contracts. Are there long-term contracts on-prem? How does that work? And and the good news is, of course, we, we offer a bunch of ways and total flexibility, you know, it's it, you pay for what you use, really. Yeah, that, and, and it's like a lot of the, um, a lot of the cloud offerings. Um, the you you can do it with no contract right you can there's no demand there's no nothing you just say i want some give it to me now we give it to you and you say i'm done with it and you give it back and we're done yeah right uh it, there's that model but uh as you might expect with with a lot of other uh you know the cloud operating model if you make longer longer term commitments and there's a there's a pricing advantage in that yeah. um but so it's, it should be very comfortable for those of you that are used to uh that are used to a cloud operating model Oh, that's a follow-up question. Let me just see that follow-up yeah, question on that. There's a follow-up. You're right. Is a, a follow-up on the uh, question about both sites sharing the same production work? Yeah, I think that's what I addressed. Um, yeah. uh, by direction. Yeah. yeah we're, so, by the way, um, we're going to, you know, you'll get follow-up emails from us on this. And if there was a question that you wanted to explore further, if you, if they respond to that email, 
Who does that go to? We'll get it. We'll get it. Yeah. Okay. So, so if you have um, if if you have a question that you want to explore further, um, you can just go ahead and re reply to that email, and we'll make sure that one of uh, one of our um, uh, more technical people, if they're technical questions, we'll get back to you and follow up on the question and yeah, and, and make sure you're getting the answer because it's, it's if we want to go into depth on something like that, we really do start have to getting into specifics. Yeah. Well, listen, we're we're at 45 minutes right now. And I feel like uh, I want to be respectful of people's time. Yeah. This has been a terrific uh, look at some serious issues around VMware Cloud and AWS and how to get more from it. And admittedly, great system. AWS, terrific. Yeah, VMware absolutely. Cloud on AWS, terrific. Yeah. Put, put Zadar in the mix and suddenly you've got really a, a full featured. Right. You don't have solution. to make the, the, the key thing to remember is you don't have to make the compromises. Yeah. A, a lot of people, especially if you were somewhat early into public cloud, and early would have just been a couple of years ago, yeah. uh, you, you, especially from the storage perspective, you had to make compromises. Uh, what we're telling you is you don't have to. Yeah. And, and if you, so if that is an issue that concerns you, please reach out to us. Um, you should at least, at a minimum, you should understand what the option is. Yeah, exactly. That's a great place to leave it, Mark. Yeah. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. Again, look forward to hearing from you, and uh, we look forward to seeing you and, and uh, being with you on the next webinar. Right, and have a great summer. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.